process like oh yeah they're gonna hate you woo, woo. yeah but I think after the premiere, like when someone had um like choked me up and stuff, that's when I knew like, oh yeah, it's probably gonna be one of them movies. Mm, damn, Q, baby, you did that. What up? What up? What up, man? It's your boy Shy Shy versus everybody podcast, Voice of Detroit, motherfucking podcast MVP in this motherfucker, man. The champ is here. What up, what up, what up, man? It's your boy Shot. Shot vs. A Body Podcast, episode 184. Got a special guest in the building, man. We're back in our acting, you know what I'm saying? Acting bag, you know what I'm saying? I've been doing too many rappers and shit, dog. Time to get to some, some niggas who, on the big screen and shit, dog. But we got a uh, actor. He was a football player, too, man. Play uh, cornerback and free safety, right? Yeah. Up yeah. at, uh, what, at Rich South High? Mm -hmm. Hell yeah, man. I know y'all seen him in Sloppy Seconds. Y'all was mad at him for his role in, as Rico and motherfucking energy and shit, dog. But we got the, the homie, man, Deshaun uh, Spivey. Yep. Deshaun Spivey, they call you D-Will, though, right? Yep, yep. What's good with you, bro? I'm good. I'm chilling. Blessed. You feel me? Appreciate y'all having me here. For sure. Hey, man, you motherfuckers cannot say shit about being late and y'all niggas stay in the city. My mm -hmm. man's came from Chicago, man. He from Chicago. Came from the shot, dog. Like, I, I appreciate that, bro. I know you got some other shit going on, but that's a, that's a nice little drive. Oh, uh, yeah. It wasn't nothing, though. For sure. Good to be here. Hell yeah. But we start off every episode with Salute Me While I'm Here. A lot of times we wait for people to pass away before we can give them their flowers and shit like that, dog. You know what I'm saying? Make that long-ass Facebook status about how we, you know what I'm saying, love him and her. But it can't be the easy answer. It can't be if you got kids. I know you got a kid, right? Mm -hmm. It can't be a kid. It can't be your parents. It can't be your old lady if you're in a relationship. It got to be somebody out of that easy answer. So you got somebody you want to give some love to? Uh, you know, just shout out to, you know, all my loved ones, mm -hmm. my granny, especially, um, mm -hmm. definitely gave me like another chance at life. You feel me? I, I had kind of like start off on the wrong foot, but mm -hmm. like, um, through her and, and through God and stuff like that, it kind of like helped me, um, become like a better person and stuff. So, For sure. yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Dog. No, hold on. The, them classic grandmas be needed, dog. Uh, yeah, Not these sure. new grandmas, nigga. <laughs> yeah. She going to tell me the truth regardless. So, so it, it's like, it's definitely good. Did you, did you have to go stay with her? Was she one of the ones that you fucking up? You gotta go stay with grandma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. What, what was it like, like, like staying with, with grandma? And shit, like, and it was different from being in the crib and then going with your grandma. And shit. No, it was a uh, real cool with my grandma, just cause like, uh, at the same time, like she was strict, but yeah. at the same time, like she was real cool, and um, you know, it all came from like a place of like heart, like yeah. love and stuff like that. So for sure, you always had to like respect that. So. Hell yeah, hell yeah, man. I'm classic grandmas. I met a grandma the other day. It was forty three, dog. Like I, I coach basketball, my little girl left. I'm like, hold on, your grandma 43? Yeah. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, she ain't even got the classic grandma arms or nothing. She ain't cooking none of that shit, though. Like, that yeah. shit different. But no, grandmas is them classic grandmas back in the day where yeah, you go over there, you already know you you gonna have fun, you gonna eat good, but she ain't about no games. Nah, nah, for sure. Hell yeah, shout out to all the grandmas, man. Uh man, my salute, man. I don't know what the fuck, man. It's too many motherfucking episodes to salute everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh shit, man. I'm just gonna salute a new year. Uh, niggas, hopefully, you know what I'm saying, niggas coming to the new year with some with some new goals and try to get better from last year or try to continue to success from last year and shit, dog. So that's my salute. Just make sure niggas get on their shit because, you know, new year, everybody in the gym. Mm -hmm. Everybody working out for that one month. <laughs> I was about to say, then, for a short time. Hell yeah, then niggas fall off, dog. But talk, speaking on the year, talk about last year, dog. How was that for you as far as personal and, and with your, you know what I'm saying, acting life? Um, personally, I feel like, well, last year, yeah. I had um, graduated college in 2022, so it was like in December 2022, so it was just like now I could focus on acting and focus on like the things I want to do now that I got school out the way. Yeah. So 2023, it was just like more so me like going after my dreams and going after like stuff I want to really do. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, acting kind of like start rolling when I start focusing more on it and um it kind of both like play hand in hand with my personal life so for sure yeah yeah talk about being a father though like you know what i'm saying like how, how have that changed you i don't know how old you got boy or little girl i got a son three-year-old son oh yeah how did that change you like from motherfucker deshaun before they had the kid and then to having a little little little, little homie yeah because i ain't gonna lie i was i was kind of wild you feel me like <laughs> i'm like every girl i'm trying to you know trying to see what's going on so <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure so so i had to like chill out but now now that i got a son it's more so like it's humbling me like to set like a better like example yeah. like now i gotta be like a role model and stuff because i don't want him 
going through whatever I had to go through in life. So. For sure. Hell yeah. yeah. That shit will motherfucking get you a chill, dog. Yeah, cause... definitely will humble you, for sure. <laughs> Me and my cousin, this nigga just talking about like, damn, since I had this little, my little, my little son, nigga, I ain't been getting no hoes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> like he been chill and then he ain't been mad by it. like you know back right. in the day like damn i ain't getting no ladies you know what i'm saying but now he like he focused on being the father and shit mm-hmm. dog hell yeah dog now how scared was you of of your uh your first kid being a little girl because <laughs> like you was on some you know saying usually they say niggas who you know was on on, on that type of time they always get a little girl at first <laughs> no nah, I, I don't know like i think i would have been cool if it was a girl mm-hmm. at that time but now I got a son. It's like, man, I'm blessed that like my first one was a no, son. Cause sure. I almost want like all boys now. I ain't yeah. gonna lie. Like, yeah. I ain't want them like a girl being raised up in this type of world. Like, oh man, it's too much sexy red and stuff. <laughs> you don't Hell know yeah. where it's gonna go. Hell yeah, dog. Cause man, I got two boys. And then my my last one's a girl. Mm-hmm. So it's like, damn. Like I'm happy, but cause if something <laughs> happened to me, I got two boys. You know what I'm saying? Take right. care of that shit. But that first one, my my oldest is fucking man. This little nigga, seventeen. So I can imagine having a 17 year old daughter right now. Like, right. Man, that's right. <laughs> like you gotta keep grown niggas and regular niggas off of her. Like, mm-hmm. cause these grown niggas be sick of it, you know what I'm saying? You never know what these niggas be about. But uh, yeah, shout out to you, man, being you know, say a young father in his mother. Uh, what's some shit that you that you don't want him to do that you was that you was doing back then? Like some shit that you like, nah, you can't do that shit. I, w- I wasn't even thinking. I don't know, like probably probably just knowing that he don't have to. Like try to go to the streets to fit in, because yeah. I, I think at times like, like I don't know, like I grew up in poverty, so it's just yeah. like you know all that was around was kind of like gangs or or like you know stuff like that. So mm. to to feel included, you probably want to jump into that. But like I want to like teach him, like man, you ain't, you ain't got to do all that, man. Hell like yeah. it's so many other resources, so many other opportunities. Like yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, hell yeah. Well, shit, since we on it, dog, speak on that shit, man. Like Chicago, like. From the outside looking in, they make Chicago seem like the worst place in the world. You know what I'm saying? Similar to Detroit. Like, we kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Little little similarities when it comes to that shit. But, like, niggas make it seem like you go to Chicago. Like, you got to keep your head on swivel. You know what I'm saying? How, right. how was it growing up in Chicago? Shit, you from the west side, south no, side? No, I'm from um out south. But, okay. like, I don't know. I, I feel like that's what anywhere, though, like, you just probably, probably would be best for you to be on the swivel and stuff like that. But, yeah. Um, shit, I mean... I don't know. Like you, you said, you said like part of Chicago be like bad and stuff. Like, like from the outside looking in. No, from out, like from me being Detroit. Like you know, what I'm saying they make it on TV. Like Chicago is the worst place to be. So just you know, just, just talk about Chicago and like some of the shit that they they miss out on as far as like like the good the good shit about Chicago. Right, right. The bad shit. Right. So so yeah, it, it's like certain parts of Chicago that be like bad. But like if you you go to Chicago like downtown or like you go to. You know, um, like certain, you know, the suburbs or something like that. It's like good food. We yeah. got, you know, good like amusement parks and stuff. You know, For good sure. places to, you know, shopping places. So yeah, yeah. it'd be cool out there. Now, if I come, if I'm there, if I'm there just chilling, me and producer Q, we down there just <laughs> riding around, dog. Like, and we and we don't know no better. Like, is it certain areas we need to stay away from? Just by just being like some niggas that don't know better. No, obviously, you probably you probably should stay away from me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um. It's definitely like areas I'll probably like say over east. Yeah. It's, it's kind of rough out there. <laughs> like 79th Marquez, 79th Muskegon. Yeah. Like say you got chill. Or you gotta know somebody and shit. Like you you won't be wanting to ride through no hood. Yeah. You know, like you just won't want to be riding through no hood. And you'll know like the hood, you'll just know. Yeah, because like though, I'm I'm saying that to say I know like in my early years, like my early 20s and shit, though, I go to a different city or something. I'm like, dog, where the hood at? Right. I'm gonna see what the hood like. You know, what I'm saying I went to Texas. Mm-hmm. I'm in Dallas. And I'm like, dog, this the hood. Like this shit look like California was the was on South Central, bro. They hood look motherfucking great. Like mm-hmm. the hood, like the birds, but n- the niggas in there don't look like they from the birds, niggas. Right, right. <laughs> so it's like back then I used to want to go to the hood, but when you get older, like yeah, they like you gotta you gotta know what you you know what I'm saying going into. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, shout out to Chicago, man. Hey, old block, dog. Talk about how how do Chicago niggas feel when outside outside try to go take a picture on old block and shit though like like it's a monument like oh I gotta take a picture on old block all oh, cause of, you know what I'm saying right. uh, my man's King Von and shit niggas act like they gotta go and take a picture on old block I, I ain't gonna lie I ain't really into the, like the old block stuff cause you know they they uh you know they uh represent who they represent but, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but um I I don't think personally I don't I never heard nobody saying they had a problem with them taking pictures it's just more so like. 
not going over there being disrespectful and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Like, yeah. So as long as you, you know, you take your picture, be smooth and get the fuck on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> basically, you know, do what you gotta do and leave. Cause it's like, like, cause I feel like you know, say it's almost like, all right, nigga, this this is our shit, but you want to come in. Like you got motherfuckers, white kids, motherfuckers who ain't right. from the hood trying to hey, let me take a picture of the old block. Like, right. man, go sit your ass down somewhere, dog. Right. Cause you know, I mean, it's police over there though. It's yeah. like right in front of the picture, like right across the street. It's like, you know, they got hella police cars okay. like just yeah. sitting right there. Yeah. So patrolling that 24-7. So they ain't yeah, and people ain't gonna probably do nothing so. for sure. Hell yeah, hell yeah, man. That's what's up. I just had to ask because like I said, outside looking in, they make shit like you go to Chicago, niggas is a rep. And yeah. say they do with Detroit. Like, I know you probably heard stories about Detroit before you came. Like, how niggas say Detroit, you know, fucking you can't, yeah. same shit. You can't get caught in the wrong gas station. Yeah, you know, like it's shit. like east and west, I, I believe. Yeah, like, yeah. Yep. So it's the east. And like you got some niggas who say on the east who just don't fuck with the west at all. Right. Like most niggas on the east side fuck with west side chicks. Right. Cause they get they just got the better chicks too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like like West Siders, they kind of got their shit in like I'm talking on female aspects, kind of a disguise. She'd be a hood rat. Mm-hmm. But she a classy hood rat. A chick on the east side, uh, hey, my east side people don't fuck me if I love y'all. You know I'm from the east side. Chicks from the east side, they just look ratchet. They don't hide that shit. They come out that motherfucker with the bonnet on, the motherfucker pajama pants on, shit, dog. Like, it's a difference, dog. Like, Man, I ain't gonna comment. <laughs> <laughs> That's his opinion. <laughs> and then you got, the, the, you know what I'm saying, niggas, niggas on the east side gonna come outside, like, whatever. You know what I'm saying? We... You can be getting money, but you can be looking like you going to, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you just on some chill shit. What's our dudes? They got to be, they, they flossy. They take the garbage out with a chain on, nigga, like. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Flash, you know. Hell yeah, dog. Hey, let me shout two for niggas get mad at me and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, um, we talked about last year, dog. What's some shit that you went to the new year, like, as far as goals that you want to accomplish this year? Uh, definitely, I want to, you know, take my acting to the next level. I want to get more opportunities and, um. Uh, really like see where I can go with it. Mm-hmm. And then um obviously, you know, just improving as a father, mm-hmm. you know. Um, you know, getting stronger and closer with God. Mm-hmm. And you know, hopefully, you know, find me a female or something. I'm That's all I say. Is, 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 is D Will looking for love, dog? He's looking for Man, love, I'm trying love, to settle down. But I I ain't looking for it. I ain't I ain't like chasing it. It's just gonna have to, you know, present itself. But yeah. Hell yeah. What's the what's the, like the, the, the longest relationship you've been in, bro? Damn. Um <laughs> Not long, probably like a year. For real? Yeah. Have you ever, uh, I asked anybody this question, bro. You ever fake cry for a chick, dog? Keep her from leaving? <laughs> Man, a, few, <laughs> a few times. <laughs> like, dog, <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do, you know? Love make you do crazy things sometimes. Bro, you know? hell yeah, because nigga, like, bro, I ain't did some fake crying, that shit didn't work. Then you feel real stupid, like, damn. All right. My fake crying bad didn't even work, dog. No, my, my shit will work. I ain't gonna lie. I should be saying. <laughs> Outside of that, what's some shit? Some shit that you probably mad about that you did to try to keep a chick from leaving? You said you said what? Some shit that you look back on now that you kind of pissed off at yourself that you did to try to keep a chick from leaving. Besides the crime shit, I probably probably like <laughs> probably like spent some money. Yeah. yeah, too much money. Yeah. Oh shit, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. Duh, that shit. <laughs> but that's why I'm telling my son. My son is seventeen. I'm telling him shit. Not to be like a motherfucking, you know what I'm saying, a chunky ass nigga, just a soft nigga when it comes to these chicks. Though. Right. Like, you learn from that shit. We ain't all did some shit. I ain't did some shit playing music in the background and shit, trying to keep a chick nigga playing a certain song on her voicemail and shit, dog. Mm-hmm. Shit don't even work, dog. Like, damn. Now you feel like a simp, dog. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going out bad. Hell yeah, hell yeah. So, yeah, we're going to find D. Will some love in 2024. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dating, dating podcast. Hell yeah, hell yeah, dog. Now, outside that, you say, uh, Try to improve on the acting stuff, man. So this something that was that was a drain from like the beginning, or like when did acting become something that you really wanted to pursue? Um, I'll probably say like around like COVID time, mm-hmm. you know, just hearing like um, because I went to school at Western Michigan and like uh, I had took like an elective class, like a theater class, mm-hmm. thinking it's gonna be like an easy A and stuff, but yeah. like. Now, it was real hard though, but um, <laughs> the teacher had us do like a little performance to like get our grade up and stuff. So I had did like a performance, and she had told me like, "Yeah, you should you should really pursue this." Mm-hmm. And like a lot of I had a lot of good feedback and stuff. So I'm thinking like, okay, I probably could like go ahead and do this. Mm-hmm. But I didn't really had a confidence at first. So then, you know, as I went on, I started doing like a web series. It's it's on YouTube called Seven Seven Three Chicago. I was doing that for a little minute. Okay, and then. 
that that kind of like where I was like, okay, I got it now. Let me go ahead and pursue this acting stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now with acting, I always ask this question for all my actors and actresses: if it was a, a classic movie, if you could sub in for somebody and take their role, what what would who would it be in what movie? A classic movie. Yeah, if you could take that, like like you know, what I'm saying. Boys in the Hood, I take you know what I'm saying, right? Uh, uh, you know, Cuba Gooden uh, spot, whatever. What was that nigga name? My motherfucker, Boys in the Hood. I forgot that nigga name. Trey. <laughs> yeah, Trey. Yeah, hell yeah. I, I would say that. I would say that, but now I got come with one. So, <laughs> so like, besides him, probably probably like Baby Boy. Yeah, you yeah. Jody. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll be Jody. <laughs> I'll play Jody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, dog, that's that's a hood classic movie. Mm-hmm. Give me your top three hood classic movies, bro. Uh. Probably Friday, yeah. Boys in the Hood, mm-hmm. and um, whew, it's it's tough. I'll probably say either Juice or The Wood. Yeah, for sure. No, that was a classic yeah. shit. Hell yeah, hell yeah. The Wood was classic, dog. Hell yeah. Give me the finest uh movie chick as far as like you know. I, you got Neil Long and Friday One. Mm-hmm. You got uh, you know, what I'm saying just give me a chick that you want to go ahead and start on the side of from one of these classic movies like Regina King, like. Who will be your your dream leading lady, dog? <laughs> probably, probably Megan Good. Oh hell yeah! yeah. This nigga on himself, dog. You can... <laughs> hell, Megan yeah. Good for sure. Hell yeah, dog. Megan Good. She can act too. Yeah, bro. she classic. I yeah. remember she was on that one shit with Tyrese. That movie, uh, damn, I forgot the name of that movie, but dog, when he was when he was making love and shit, nigga, I'm like, god damn, yeah, Megan, Megan Good been fine forever, dog. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about since Cousin Skeeter days. I don't know if y'all know about Cousin Skeeter, but nigga, she been fine forever, dog. Now we gonna get back to acting shit, but what's some shit that you still need to improve on that you feel that may be holding you back with life, with movies? Like, what's some shit that you still need to work on and fix? Um, probably, probably like not being so much of an introvert. I'm real like homebody. Like in real life, I like just being in the crib, mm-hmm. going to work, going yeah. home. Yeah. But like, I know now I probably gotta be more extroverted, going out more. You know, trying to meet people, network and stuff like that. So I'm gonna try to do that more this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you feel like that's some shit that maybe hold you back, just chill yeah. too much. Yeah. Especially with this, with this type of position you in as far as being an actor and stuff like that, you gotta be kind of out there a little bit right. more. So your face, or you say, "Fuck that," I rather be in the crib chilling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel you, dog. Because niggas tell me all the time with this podcast, "Shy, you need to be out, you need to be seen." But dog, I don't even like fucking around like that, dog. You know what right. I'm saying? All right. I rather sit in the crib, eat some good food, watch some TV, and yeah, I feel comfortable in the crib. You know? Hell yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Now talk about when times get hard, bro. Like when shit kind of hard for you, who can you talk to? Like you know, what I'm saying during those times. Uh, de- definitely God for yeah. sure. Like mm-hmm. I-, I really be having like real conversations with that man. For yeah. Real. So, you know, definitely him, and then like probably my granny too. Mm-hmm. Like, like cause she gonna tell me the real. You know, she gonna tell me like even if it's something I don't want to hear, it's something I need to hear. So it's like, mm-hmm. all right, cool. You know. Yeah, 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 hell yeah. So I was gonna ask you what's your day to day life outside of after and shit like that, dog. But you say you just you chill yeah, in the crib. It, that that's it. Just yeah. be in the crib. I work. You know, take care of my responsibilities. And yeah, just sleep. What's the what? What's the uh? What motivates you like to, to stay on this shit besides your son? Of course, your son motivates you. But what's some other shit that motivates you to keep on going? Um. You know the people around me. You know that uh, care about me and stuff. They they want to see like the the best. You know that uh, from like the best things for me mm-hmm. like to come and all that type of stuff. So it's like it's important for me to go after all that. So I'm making sure that they are straight. Was you the first person in your family like to to graduate college? Yeah, yeah. How yeah. important was that? Like you know, what I'm saying just to to do that because like you know I know that's some shit that I didn't do. I wish I would have had you know what I'm saying continue with school. But when I was in school, I found out my girl at the time was pregnant. Right. So I had to kind of like leave that the school alone. I said I was gonna go back, but I've been saying that shit for a long time. <laughs> but yeah, talk about talk about that though. Um, it was it was a a big moment, mm-hmm. just cause like everybody was everybody was telling me like, oh yeah, you know, you the first to do that and, and stuff like that. But like, I don't think it, it really hit me even now. I don't think it really hit me that I even did all that. So it's just like, all right, keep going. What's next? Mm-hmm. So I think once I accomplish everything that I need to accomplish, then I look back and be like, oh yeah, I did all that. So. Hell yeah, was that always the goal? Like in high school, middle school, like was college always the the big picture, or like was your family pushing for that? No, no, that was definitely my family pushing that. I was, <laughs> I was, yeah, I was really just trying to, you know, um, I didn't know what I was gonna do after high school. I just wanted to, you know, mm-hmm. 
do some, yeah. get some money. Figure that shit out, yeah. Whatever yeah. it is, go equate to some bread. Right. Now, you, like I said earlier, you played cornerback, right? You played free safety. Yeah. Like, like uh, talk about your football days, bro. Did you have football <laughs> dreams? Like, did you want to play in the NFL, go play right. college ball? Like, talk about that. Yeah, like playing sports, I think I think that's really what kept me like out of the streets and stuff and kept me motivated to keep my grades good and everything like that. Cause you know, if you fall beneath like beneath like a one point five, one point or something, you're not you're not eligible to play in the game or yeah. miss a practice. So yeah. it always made me, you know, kept my grades decent. So mm-hmm. um yeah, I was decent though. Like I was <laughs> yeah, I was I was decent. I was real fast. You know, people know me for being like real fast and then so Yeah. So, so who like you play D- DB? Right. Who who your favorite DBs? Uh, right now, like just oh, every, uh, period, time. period, period. Uh, probably say like Ed Reed. Mm-hmm. You got um, I like Jalen Ramsey. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a lot. Mm-hmm. Earl Thomas the third. Yeah. So yeah. So did you was ever like was it was was NFL ever in your dreams? Like, nah, nah. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It, it's like the concussions and all that, you mm-hmm. know, so too much going on with that. But Now, how hard is it right now, though, you know, just the last day of the uh, NFL, knowing that the Bears ain't going to make the playoffs? Like, is that, is that, <laughs> that, is that tough, though? Because, like, I'm a Lion fan. We've been going through this shit forever. Like, right, right, right. <laughs> like, this is our first time in a long time. Like, we ain't won division since what, 93? We ain't won a playoff game since 91. So, nigga, yeah. this shit like a holiday for us, boy, making the playoffs and winning the division. Like, right. I do feel like, like, like with your team, like is it harder watching the Bears struggle or the Bulls? Because <laughs> both our teams struggling, nigga. Right, Pistons right. ain't won a game since motherfucker. Um, I, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't really a fan of the uh, Bears or nothing like that. But like my family, like my uh, household and everything, they really love the Bears. So like seeing them all sad and stuff, it kind of mm-hmm. hurt. Yeah. But like I don't know, I don't know what they gonna do with Justin Fields. I don't know if they are gonna trade him or draft a quarterback. See, or, I. I if I was him, I think I, I don't know, dog. Like I want to keep him because I feel like Justin Fields is straight. I just feel like the right. offensive line wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? Because him and DJ Moore, like them niggas had like some shit. Just feel straight. Like I never understood why niggas kind of were trying to down him. I feel like he got some game. But I feel like it'd be kind of stupid to draft somebody and be in the same situation you win. Right. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what you're getting. You know, I know my man from Washington is straight. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Old boy from uh, USC, but. I feel like niggas just stick with him and just draft him and build around him. Right. Get the right. offense line together and y'all be straight. Yeah, they gotta fix a lot. Yeah. A Hell lot, yeah. So. Hell yeah, dog. Yeah. Shout out to, to the Lions though, man. We finally get the win some shit, dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's finally get the win this motherfucker, dog. Yeah, y'all yeah. was supposed to beat the Cowboys, though. Man, man they hold us, bro. <laughs> Damn, they hold us, man. I don't want to talk about that. I, was like, I got for real had attitude. Nigga. Like, I ain't want to talk to nobody, dog. What what else would you um into basketball? Like you did you do anything else besides play football? Yeah, I ran track and stuff. I did um like AAU basketball and stuff, but I ain't never like played on a team after like my sophomore year. Oh, so you had a little game then? Yeah, no, I, I was a little decent uh, yeah. hooper though. Like, yeah, who yeah. you feel like the, the t- uh, toughest Chicago hooper ever? Like, all the toughest Chicago hooper yeah. ever. Got to go with D Rose. Hell yeah, yeah, hell yeah, D Rose. Was, man, that's one nigga. I'm mad that he he got hurt, bro. Yeah. That was my nigga, youngest MVP. Like this man, D yeah, Rose is gonna nigga. be great. He was gonna be great. Hell yeah, hell yeah, man. Shout out to fucking D Rose, dog. Now, when it comes to life and when it comes to acting, bro, what's the worst advice and best advice you received? Um, man, it ain't gotta be just acting, be acting or personal. Like just some terrible advice and some great advice that you always remember. Uh, just just being like yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, just understanding like you be yourself. I think people respect you more, mm-hmm. in my opinion. So yeah, and then um. You you ain't gotta you ain't gotta fake it. You ain't gotta fake nothing with nobody. Just be honest, be respectful, be mm-hmm. yourself. So yeah. I think that was the best advice somebody ever told me. So yeah, I yep. use that in my acting. I apply that with my acting too. So you ever had some homies you ain't lost? You know, what I'm saying relationships with as far as like just niggas faking. Right. Yeah. 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 It, it happens though. It happens through life. Like you you only meet people for you know a certain amount of time. Like everybody not supposed to be in your life forever. So. Mm-hmm. You know, situations kind of bring out those true colors in people. So you just Hell yeah, you got to peep them signs early. For sure. Give me a first adult decision. The first decision you made that you like, nigga, I'm I'm out here, nigga. I'm a real grown nigga, though. Like, uh, like what you mean? Like, give me an example. What you like, mean? Like, my, I, all right, if you ask me a question, my, I feel like my first adult decision was just 
quitting school and working full time because I had son on the way. Right. It was it was that was like my first decision I had to make and really like think about it, like damn, do I want to continue on with school or mm-hmm. do I want to just go ahead and start stacking money and saving up and getting prepared for to be a father? Right. So what's some shit with you? You feel like this that was like the first adult like you crossed over from being a kid to an adult because of this decision. Right. I I'll say like um I used to hang with with like niggas all day every day like mm-hmm. we just used to be in the crib you know just smoking or something just you know just talking mm-hmm. and you know after days go by you start realizing like damn bro, we we in the same position <laughs> like we, we ain't did nothing like we steady talking about what we gonna do but we're not doing none of this like, mm-hmm. like this kind of boring so <laughs> you feel me I, I had to move away from that like slowly but surely it took a lot though but slowly mm-hmm. but surely had to move away from that yeah start focus on other things no for sure hell yeah now i asked you about fake crime for a chick bro all right but when the last time you cried it didn't have nothing to do with death <laughs> Cried had nothing to do. I ain't gonna lie. I had just seen the uh, color purple. Yeah, that movie. I, shit, <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a sad movie at the. It was a sad movie at the end. Like so, a sad scene. Well, shit, what, what's what's another movie that you can't watch without getting a little teary eyed? Cause bro, I, I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> There's two movies I can't watch, bro. Crooklyn, cause uh, my my mom passed a, a while back, and the moms on that motherfucker remind me of my mom. So I mm-hmm. watched that shit. I gotta go to the bathroom. Like, let me get away from y'all niggas real quick. And uh, pursue of happiness, dog. Like, I was just gonna say that, yeah, yeah, that, pursuit of happiness, right? <laughs> that shit. That, what, what, what part of that movie fuck you up, dog? Because like the end when that nigga finally like, nigga, I did it, nigga, like I made it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what, what about that movie? Get, get a little teary out for D Will and shit, dog. I think I think the part where uh like he was talking to his son by the fence and stuff and yeah. and then um it was a couple parts dude. Yeah. <laughs> him running to the job you know um oh yeah with the we ain't had no shirt on yeah shit. all fucked up and they they uh let him get the job and stuff that was deep yeah damn I'm, I'm trying to think of a movie man <laughs> it's a lot of movies <laughs> have you ever cried some shit that you like nigga what the fuck am I even crying for uh huh <laughs> <laughs> yeah man. Yeah, it's a lot of good movies. Uh, probably, probably the, I don't know. The Great Debater is a good movie. Yeah, yeah. Nigga, I remember I cried the last episode of Fresh Prince, nigga. Yeah, just because that shit was over, nigga. Like, yeah, the daddy scene that was that was real sad. Too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, that shit fuck you up, dog. That's just, especially if your daddy ain't around or you, or you, something happened to him. Like mm-hmm. damn, shit fuck you up good, dog. Damn. Yeah, shout out to them, to the motherfuckers people who can cry with. Well. So some niggas be too tough to cry, nigga. Like man, like, nigga, <laughs> fuck, it's okay. Cry, goddamn, nigga, you ain't hard all the time, nigga. All right. To give me something that you wanted to be that don't nobody know about. Like something that I wanted to be a tap dancer, bro. All right. Niggas don't know that shit. So what's something that you wanted to be that you never told nobody? It was probably like for a short period of time. Um, probably probably like a, a poet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I shit wrong with that. Yeah, like I I used to read that that Langston Hughes and stuff. A yeah. lot a lot of Langston Hughes. Oh yeah, you talk about man's uh that's my man's language right there. Yeah, shit. It's, it's, it's some good, it's some good Langston Hughes out there. You ever sell somebody poetry to recite to a chick? Yeah, yeah, I ain't gonna <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say no, but shit, ain't no point of how it's it somewhere weird. I I ain't doing that no more though, but for sure. Yeah. Do you ever would you ever into music? You ever wanted to be in your rapping bag? <laughs> Uh yeah, I had some homies and stuff. We we tried that shit out because I was around them and stuff. So we, you know, want nothing else to do but freestyle. So yeah, just... hey, you you ain't think about putting the EP out though? Nah, hell nah, <laughs> that shit old. You said you gonna focus on rap shit, huh? Nah, nah. I mean on on, on after shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just chick. Now speaking of Chicago, we know about the rappers that you know what I'm saying we supposed to know about. You know what I'm saying the the, the little Dirks, the G Herbos, the Kanye West. The, you know what I'm saying list can go comments. Who are some people right now in the come up? That we should know about as far as Chicago rappers, because like we got a lot of people that you know it took it took some time for our people that was going to come like Skiller Baby like it took time right. for them to so who's people like that on Chicago? It's like they 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 there, but they ain't they ain't over the top just yet. I mean, I'm I'm sure you know um, to go on to add your, to your list probably like you know Zay Lil Zay Osama, mm-hmm. um, you got SG Batman. Okay, you know he he nice with it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know Lil Fo, that they uh they used to rock together Lil Fo and SG Batman. Okay. So yeah. Um yeah, it's, it's a lot. THF Lil Law. Mm. It, it, it's a lot of young rappers coming up. Did you feel like people stole the Chicago sound, that drill sound? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, cause you gotta think about it, it's, it's Keith. Yeah, Keith no, started sure. that. Hell I, yeah. In my opinion. So no, he did. Then you can next thing you know, 
all New York niggas on that motherfucking right, drill right. shit. They are, yeah, they, they definitely y'all had y'all sound. Niggas starting to steal the Detroit sound. Like it just it be ways, bro. Like it be mm-hmm. it be moments for each region or each city, whatever, to get their own shit. Cause right. at one point in time, everybody was trying to sign deal from Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? You got the West Coast sound. I remember Texas was rocking hard with uh, Paul Wall and Mike Jones and shit. Mm-hmm. So each, each each people get their moment. I'm glad we finally got our fucking moment, nigga. We you wasn't hearing nobody from Detroit except for fucking Eminem and Big Sean, nigga. Right, right. <laughs> for a while too. Yeah, sure. yeah. I don't know if niggas was like scared to fuck with us or if they just didn't feel like we had the talent. But right. I think the song that really broke us out was probably like either Days Love Try Me or T Grizzly first day out. Oh yeah, I was gonna say first day out for sure. Yeah, that's, that really took everybody. You Try know me, saying? yeah. Days low, but she had her wave. It was it was for sure a wave going on. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Because niggas, a thousand niggas did the remix. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> her and Dirk was fucking around with each other. Right. Shit. Yeah, she was nice. Hell yeah, no, she was straight. Hell yeah, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. Like she ain't putting music out as as much as she used to, but shit, I was fucking around. Come on, days, come on the show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you had to describe yourself to someone, but you could only use a song. Or an album, what would that song or album be that's gonna describe you? Damn. <laughs> you hit me with some questions, huh? No, try to, man. <laughs> try. A song. Um, it could be a song or an album. It could be a whole project or one song, but it could be, it ain't gotta be your whole life, but it could be like a period of your life or whatever. I, I'll probably say like uh G Herbal Bond, like I'm Kobe. That, yeah, yeah, that whole mixtape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. You feel like niggas sleep on Herbo? I do. Man, yeah, for sure. I feel like niggas be yeah. sleeping on Herbo, dog. Yeah, legend. Hell yeah, hell yeah, dog. Now, back to the crib. Who was in who was in your crib? Like, was it moms and dad? Was it siblings? Like, talk about that shit. Yeah, so I, I had my mom and um my five five sisters. So it was just, you know, me as the only boy. Mm-hmm. And so then um I think I was like 15, 14, 15. I had moved and stayed with my granny mm-hmm. and um stayed with her. And yeah, that, that was pretty much my life. So I start off like man, we was we was poor as hell. Like we was <laughs> <laughs> moving from like house to house, shelter yeah. to shelter. So it was it was kind of like rough. Yeah. What's well, so give me your poorest your poorest uh story, dog. Give me a, <laughs> a real post story, dog. Man. Like a moment that you're like, damn, we are po. Like I remember. We, me and my little brother sharing bad water, like, damn, right, right, this bitch. <laughs> right, because, because you know, a lot of times people be saying, like, you don't know when you, you don't know that you poor, like, when you're young, but like, I ain't gonna lie, I knew, I knew, <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was poor. <laughs> like, when them, when them lights is off and we, we can't, you know, yeah. it was over with at six o'clock, you know, <laughs> slow it down. Hell yeah, everything off. <laughs> you be lucky you got a mattress or something, but like, sometimes for food, I remember, like, man, with no food in the crib, what we eating? Like, mm-hmm. probably like a uh, like some bread with some syrup. <laughs> no, hell yeah, hell yeah, never wrong with that shit, dog. That was that meal that motherfuckers. <laughs> hell okay, yeah, we got that shit. But ain't, ain't you do you still eat some of those po meals? Man, like, hell no. Nah. Oh no, I still you never gonna. <laughs> I uh, might eat some noodles still. Oh yeah, hell yeah, but no, pork beans and hot dogs, nigga. That was shit. Pork beans and hot dogs, hell yeah. That that used to be that meal too. Hell yeah, but the way you say syrup on bread, I used to do that shit with sugar. Yeah, the sugar toast dog. <laughs> that was like motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, it was it was hard times. Sure, <laughs> that was like a honey bun. Nigga. <laughs> you can laugh at that shit now, but going through that, your stomach Girl. still growling after the meal. <laughs> like damn. And then you saying you the only boy, so the girls got you first. Right, right, right. <laughs> that shit crazy, bro. Yeah, but you can only appreciate that shit though when you get older and just hope that you know your kids don't have to go through that right, shit you right. went through. Right. But that shit make you better sometimes too in the long run. It, it could for sure. Yeah. Damn, that shit really them po days. <laughs> like you said, when that when that electricity off the like cable, I remember the only time I watched cable when I went on my granddad house, dog. Mm-hmm. Cause we never had cable. Mm-hmm. We just had channel what one through thirteen with the little twenty and fifty and shit, dog. Man, <laughs> that's it, dog. That shit crazy, bro. Now you speak on your dad. Do you got a relationship with your father? Um, uh, it, it's it's cool right now. It's real cordial. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's just you know um. You know, I just feel like, all right, boom, I'm I'm a man now, so ain't yeah. really nothing he could really teach me. So it's more like, you mm-hmm. know, you could you could be cool, we be cool, and then, yeah. but ain't no ain't no teaching, ain't no more. For sure, no more you, of that. you felt like 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 life would have been different if he was around, shit. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. I probably be in the NFL or something. Yeah, somebody, you know, what I'm saying, be there to, to motivate you and keep you going and shit. Right. Yeah. Hell yeah. Now I do this thing, bro. 
because I'm I'm only, I, I take an album and I take a tight uh tracks from the album and turn them to stories. Right. So you uh you started on the side of um G Mac Cash. Or whatever in your in your sloppy seconds movie and shit, dog. Mm-hmm. And he just had a project that came out not too long called called Made in Detroit too. All right. So I take a title, uh, and we turn it to a conversation, dog. So number eight, you got a song called Toxic. Mm-hmm. How you feel about toxic women? Like you fuck with them, you try to stay away from them, dog. Man, they they attracted to me. I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I be trying to stay away from them for sure. I, I think I'm getting better at like staying away from them now. But like, nah, man, hell no, nah, I don't want to. No, I don't like them. But the toxic hoes be the ones with the ass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They do look, you know, the, the pussy definitely good for sure. You feel me? But but you gotta you gotta be a you gotta have that mind control. For sure. Hell yeah, hell yeah. You gotta have that mind control. Toxic women. Make uh track number nine. He got a song called Make It Out. What's making it out for D Will? What what how is it gonna be when you like I really made it out? Like what what's what's life gonna be like once you make it out that you can you know say envision right now? All right, so so I I uh define like success is like, you know how many people around you you, you know is successful, mm-hmm. you know. So um, me making it out would be like, all right, I put all all the people that I care about on. They they decent, you mm-hmm. know. They straight, mm-hmm. and to know that you know nobody that I know got to like work hard no more and like slave over no job, no nine to five. Like mm-hmm. that's why I know I'll make it. Hell for yeah, sure. hell yeah. Because like just doing that shit by yourself is kind of like damn, like. It ain't selfish, but it's like, damn, what have, what have I done to help my my you know my people exactly. out too at right. the same time and shit, dog? Would you put any of your people in the movie, dog? Like, who, who in your family you can see acting and shit with you, dog? <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah. Hell no, dog. It's funny. Now, track eleven, he got a song called "Old School." What's something that you missed from from the past days that you wish that was still around now? It could be TV, it could be a style, it could be the way niggas are dressing, a brand. Like, what's something you want you wish you could bring back? <laughs> uh, probably that, probably that Soldier Boy song that cranked that. <laughs> it, it was a time. It was a time. It was a time period. I know you probably got some videos of you and that bitch doing it, dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. It was it was a fun time. Like everybody, that's when everybody was outside, you know, bopping. Mm-hmm. You know the, that that wave was out. Mm-hmm. We could bring all that back. Yeah, it was a fun time. What uh, what clothing brand would you want to bring back? For me, it would be a. Uh, would y'all rocking Jabos in um in Chicago? Um, some people, yeah. I, I, I ain't never had none. Though. Yeah, you was fucking with it. <laughs> what's what's a clothing brand you wish you could bring back? <sighs> Shit, probably, probably like. I ain't gonna lie, people was wearing that era pasta. Yeah, yeah. Hell everybody yeah. was wearing era pasta. Hell yeah, for sure. Hell yeah, dog. Back in the day, nigga, was y'all, wear? Hell yeah, baggy clothes and shit, dog. Mm-hmm. Like niggas was one hundred and forty wearing size thirty eight pants and shit, dog. Damn, that's some classy <laughs> shit, bro. But yeah, I remember Fubu. I thought they were trying to come back and shit, dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Niggas rocking the Fubu. What What was a mom a a, a moment that really humbled you? Because he got on number thirteen, he got a song called "Humble." A moment that really humbled me. Yeah. Um, probably, probably like when I uh, graduated college mm-hmm. and um had my son. Mm-hmm. That really humbled me to know, like, okay, I'm in the real world now. Like, ain't no more school. Mm-hmm. I'm a father now. Like, you know, this it's the adult life for real, for real. Hell yeah. Is, is your son a junior? No, nah, no, nah, no. Okay, okay. You Kyrie. Know I mean? Kyrie, oh yeah. I, nigga, that's a hard name. I was going to talk about it. <laughs> I wanted to name my son that shit. My wife was like, oh, it's going to be my name. Like, damn. Because mm-hmm. it was her turn and shit. So. <laughs> I was like, man, whatever, dog. I couldn't think of a name besides my name. I was going to have all my kids named Rashad. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up, dog. All right, number 14, got a song called Last House. What's the last house that you and your family all lived in together? It wasn't no care. It was an apartment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but shit, yeah. How, was things a little bit better then? That last time? Nah, not really. Cause it was it was like, I mean, yeah, yeah. You could say that just because like we was all close together. Like we had no choice but to be cool with each other. Mm-hmm. You feel me? But as far as like the conditions, nah. Yeah, hell yeah. Small as hell. Yeah. Yeah. Now, cause I, with my mom and and my brother, we only stayed in one complete house. I don't know. Do y'all got a thing down there called two two family flats? Yeah, yeah. All right. So yeah, we never stayed in the house, but one time. All right. Other than that, we was in apartments or two family flats. And I remember one time we stayed in my my dad homeboy uh, attic and shit though for a little bit. That was Man. fucked up. <laughs> but like, have y'all ever stayed in the crib? But it was always like apartments and shit. No, it was always apartments and flats. Yeah. yeah, hell yeah, dog. All right, number 15, he got a song called I'm Up Now. 
when was that time of your life like then like you feel like nigga, i'm up like shit going up i think i think when i started like standing on my own with the with the acting stuff like i wasn't like letting nobody kind of like like uh convince me or manipulate me like trying to take advantage of like my acting talents or whatever so mm -hmm. so it was more so like all right, I'm, I'm gonna start doing skits now. Yeah. And then once I kind of like was going viral or getting more attention on my skits, I'm like, okay, yeah, I don't really need nobody. Yeah. You feel me? So hell yeah. Track four, you got shit called 100 percent down. Who is 100 percent down for you, though? Like, like who are the people that's 100 percent down for you, no matter what you do, fucking up, doing good, whatever. Um, my granny, my sisters. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Do you feel like your sisters, like having sisters, it made you like really understand the females a little bit more? Mm-hmm. For like, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause I ain't got no sisters, but I can only imagine like yeah, especially five sisters and you ain't <laughs> yeah, it, it made me for sure like appreciate women like a lot more. Like mm -hmm. cause I that's all I grew up around. So so it just made me have like way more respect for women. Mm -hmm. like, I was never like coming at no woman, calling them like the B word or like being real disrespectful. So yeah. hell you know, yeah. So are you are you that brother by you having all your sisters, like whenever they get into it with a dude, they calling you. You got yeah, <laughs> yeah, they they be calling, but like for for the most part, my sister be cool. Like I, I feel like I didn't uh, been around them long enough for them to, you know, um, make good decisions and stuff. So yeah, they be cool around dudes. So they don't, yeah, they yeah. they know what to be around for sure. Hell yeah, ain't no, you can't be coming around the whole ass niggas. Right, shit, right. <laughs> now the last one I'm gonna do is track twelve. Keep your head up. Was there ever a time that you was like down and out, but you just had to keep your head up, keep it moving? Man, hella times. You know, <laughs> shout out G Mac. He got the whole title of this song. <laughs> for every emotion. Um, but yeah, keep, keep yeah, for sure. Yeah. Cause it'd it be times like you you feel like okay, you not winning, like you doing all the, the right things, but it's no results for real, for real. So it's mm. like, damn, like what the fuck? You know, yeah, so you be you be kind of blue, but for sure. But you you gotta understand, like, you know, the time gonna come if it's gonna come, like if it's meant to be, it's gonna be. So it's just now for sure. Yeah. Now you at the way I'm saying we we talked about his you know use his music for uh, you know saying our little stories and shit. Right. Did you know about him prior to the whole acting like what did was he viral down there like with the whole Papa got roaches and Black Air Forces and shit like that? Did you know about him? No, I honestly I had uh I heard the song um why well, have nine bitches when you yeah, got oh, yeah, yeah, I heard sure. that song but I didn't know that was him. I just heard like the the, the song. You yeah. feel me? So so like when I first met him on uh, Sloppy Seconds, that's um they had told me like yeah that's him woo woo so I'm like he don't even sound like that <laughs> <laughs> he don't even sound like that so I was kind of <laughs> but then like I I had followed him and stuff like that and yeah. I'm like oh that, yeah that he legit yeah, yeah. that nigga go viral off every song yeah, 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 yeah shout out to G man he was on this motherfucker he cool nigga cool dude dog now dog when I first saw Sloppy Seconds bro. <laughs> Oh, I feel talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I mean, my wife watching this shit. I'm like, this nigga is ruthless, dog. Like, I'm like, I gotta get this nigga on the podcast, bro. I gotta reach out and shit, dog. The whole character Rico, bro. Nigga was that nigga from the beginning of the movie to the end. This nigga was reckless, dog. But right. just talk about that role, how did it come about, and shit like that. You know, so just talk about the Rico role and the whole movie Sloppy Seconds. How did you get that that role? Yeah, what was crazy? I didn't even um when I initially auditioned for it, I didn't really have no no background about the movie or the mm -hmm. character. So it was just more so like, all right, you just finna go in, mm -hmm. you know, um, probably read some lines or, or probably do a monologue, yeah. kill it, mm -hmm. and they gonna have to put you in the movie. For sure. <laughs> that, that's how I was looking at it. So I didn't really think or uh, intended that they was gonna cast me as Rico or something. So, because mm -hmm. I think in the book, he got dressed and stuff. I, I ain't got dressed. So yeah. I'm, you know, hoping just to be in the movie, but they had told me that. And then you feel me, Um, I had got the script Mm. And from the moment I read the script, it was just like, man, I don't know how I'm gonna pull this off because I ain't nothing like him. You feel me? <laughs> but like, it was just so many cuss words, so many you know crazy words now, all that. And I had called uh uh, uh the girl who played Keisha, her name Jana. Mm -hmm. I had called her, you know, so we can get like comfortable because she she was gonna have to take all this we all this abuse. Yeah, <laughs> so I wanted to make sure she was cool, like you feel me. So we we had got like real cool and everything, so it, it kind of like worked out to where like it looked real and natural because mm -hmm. you know we understood that it was acting. So. For sure, for sure, because uh man, it was all because I got hooked on the movie. It was all on fucking Facebook and Instagram. Everywhere right. I goes, it was talking about it. It was talking about your fucking character. Mm -hmm. So one day, me and my wife is a career like, let's go ahead and watch this shit though. I'm like, this nigga is wild. <laughs> they call him mm -hmm. Mama bitches. <laughs>
Yeah, it was wild <laughs> for sure. No, nigga, pilter all everything. <laughs> and they would get mad. Come on. <laughs> but uh, talk about like, did you know after the movie was over that people was gonna be mad at you though? Because everybody with the name Rico is a fucked up character, cuz right. that and you got Rico on paying for nigga. Like, mm-hmm. did you know that like, you knew you was gonna get you know saying niggas coming at you all sideways about the about the road? Cause niggas forget it's a movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh shit. I ain't know to that, like to that extent it was gonna be like that, but yeah. I knew. You know, cause they they was telling me all throughout, you know, the uh, filming process, like, oh yeah, they gonna hate you, woo woo. Yeah. But I think at the premiere, like when someone had um like choked me up and stuff, that's when I knew, like, <laughs> oh yeah, it's probably gonna be one of them movies that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who did that? What, what the fuck was it? Man, shout out to that lady. She got a picture of me somewhere, cause we ended up taking a picture. But I, yeah. And that lady <laughs> choked me up man, at now, the premiere. Now talk about was it? This, so this is after the movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, did you get caught off guard? Like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> which, <laughs> which, I could tell the story or something. For sure, hell yeah, man. So, um, um, we at the premiere, the movie over with or whatever. Um, <laughs> you know, they, uh, I'm probably one of the last people to leave out the movie theater. So I'm, you know, talking to the people wherever we chopping it up. And they like, oh yeah, people gonna hate you wherever. Woo woo. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, cool. And then I'm like, I'm probably gonna leave out the back door type shit. You feel me? Put this cause I have the shicey mask on. I was gonna walk out like that. You feel me? But then you know, they like, oh no, it ain't gonna be like that. It's gonna be all love type mm-hmm. shit. You know, yeah. they're gonna congratulate you. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I leave out. I'm walking out. Now, I don't know if y'all know how it's set up. How to uh Bel Air. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you gotta walk out the double doors or whatever. So boom, I'm walking out the double doors. I see this lady, she instantly pulled me to the corner. Right by that little banner thing, pull me to the corner and start choking me up. Like, man, you that you that Rico nigga, woo woo. Drunk as hell. Like she 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 drunk as hell, slurred Dude. all in her voice, like, I hate you, woo woo. She got uh like three three little female friends in the background. They all, yeah, yeah, cheering. Like, yeah, we hate you too. We condoning that shit. You feel me? So I'm just like, yeah, it was just a movie, woo woo. They want to try and none of that shit though. Dog, that shit funny, dog. Cause bro. You play that shit, nigga. It's almost believable the way you play that shit, nigga. Right. <laughs> like that, I guess that make a good actor, make that shit believable, bro. Cause nigga, it was that shit when you had you had uh went to bar shop, nigga, got her ass, went fucked her to her, stay her ass in bed, right. and that bitch and fucked up a credit shit, nigga. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> Took her to crib at G Mac and them smacking out, nigga. Like, dog, that shit was hilarious, bro. Like that was that was a straight movie, bro. That shit was that shit was funny as hell for sure. Cause I'm like, dog, what's all this fuss about? Like. That's how I get a lot of movies there, you know what I'm saying? That be on Tubi, it'd be like, you know what I'm saying? Of course, everybody gonna talk about it. Right. I say, and she's like, dog, this nigga is reckless. Even when he got the number, he was reckless. Mm-hmm. Like, and then he started talking shit about the mom and dad. Like, damn, like, oh, your, your whole ass mama and shit, nigga. Like, bro. But you say, they ain't, you ain't got none of those characteristics at all. No, I be, I be cool. I be, I be real cool, just chilling. Yeah. So, how are you in real life when you meet the parents? Are you, are you, put, <laughs> <laughs> are you on your interview? Because, you know, when you interview for a job, that's right. not you. So right. when you meeting the parents, are you trying to like really like let me go ahead and get in good with the parents, bro? Like how how are you when you meeting a, a young lady uh parents for the first time? Like I I really just be myself. You yeah. feel me? Cause I don't know. I, I think for the most part, uh, people that I be around, they they be cool with me. They like yeah. me. Yeah. So so it's just all right, just be yourself. So so they don't have to wait for you to your true colors to get exposed, or mm-hmm. now they can accept for who you are and stuff like that. You yeah. don't gotta but always, you know, at, no, I'm always gonna be respectful. Though. I ain't gonna like cuss at them. Like <laughs> yeah, so, the Rico's out here right, going crazy. Right. <laughs> now, how is it when you introducing your a chick to your family? Like, what they come into when they meeting a D Will fam? I ain't gonna lie. We kind of, we kind of a little ratchet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We a little ratchet, but you know, as long as you you, you cool with ratchet shit, we cool. You know, <laughs> like we gonna drink, we gonna have fun, we gonna now. Yeah. Is your mom and, and your grandma like what they say about a chick? Do it mean something to you? Like if they don't like her, like you can't fuck with her, right? Like, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. it, yeah. It got to be like that because yeah. they they important to me. So and them them people that I really be around a lot. So mm-hmm. if you can't if they can't be around you, shit, I'm broke. <laughs> you know? Hell yeah. I would go back to that movie. I was just seeing all that shit, though. Nigga was, <laughs> this nigga was a wild nigga. Took her bread, everything. Especially when the niggas had, <laughs> when got you, when you got arrested, then you got had to wear. Like, nigga, you was the one that bitch tripping, nigga. Yeah, I call this nigga immediately because he be, dog, he be up on. If I want to know about a Tubi movie or movie in general, Netflix, I hit this nigga up. He's going to tell me about all the movies that's good, dog, because he do his shit called uh, 
uh, Tubi, uh, what'd you do this shit? Tubi movie. Yeah, Tubi, yeah. yeah, Tubi movie Tuesday when he shot uh, the, the best movie on Tubi and shit, duh. Do you get mad when <laughs> niggas call you a Tubi movie, bro? Huh? Do I get mad about like what? Like when they be like, oh, it's a Tubi movie or not just say it's a movie. Do you get mad about that shit? Mm. Yeah, no. You, you don't give a fuck. Now, do you want to kind of like get out of that that lane? Like, do you want do you see yourself in the future like going after those those big roles? Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, like you talking about like Tyler Perry or like yeah, some Netflix like shit. That, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, of course. For yeah. sure. I, I definitely want to expand. I don't want to be like attached to like just one person or just you know one one type of role or mm-hmm. any anything like that. So yeah. For sure. Dad, do you feel like your next your next big role? Do you feel like you need to play somebody totally different so people can stop talking about and asking you about Rico? Um it depends. I, I had this question asked to me before. So all right, so I probably wouldn't want to play like another character like mm-hmm. Rico mm-hmm. in a in a separate movie, but like if it was like a, a sloppy seconds two or something, oh, like yeah, or yeah. Rico two or something, I'll probably, you know, yeah. be cool playing Rico. But no, nah, my next role probably gotta be different though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we definitely cool. need a best on Rico, though. I should do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because everybody <laughs> met him at the what the party. Yeah, so, yeah, you know. So you didn't know how that nigga for... childhood was, so right? Because he, yeah, he seemed like somebody who wasn't mom, who wasn't getting loved the yeah. right way, dad. You know what I'm saying? Some some traumatizing stuff for sure. Yeah. Like everybody got a story. To... No, for sure, that'd be yeah. dope, nigga. They, they, if they did more movies like that, like like going in, like everybody wants to know about Kanan on power. Like how was that nigga growing up? Right, like how right. was his life like to be such this ruthless ass nigga? Mm-hmm. So yeah, we need that Rico. The, 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 uh, <laughs> Rico in high school and shit, dog. Man, shout Miss LB, Miss Michelle. Y'all, y'all get the writing. For sure. That's, <laughs> that's funny as hell, bro. Now, uh, would you ever want to play like a little, like, little love movie and shit like that? Like, you be get your little love on and shit, LL Cool J and shit in this bitch? <laughs> Man, I, I be thinking, I be thinking I'm smooth. You feel me? I be thinking I'm smooth, but in real life, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't got no game for real. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how natural that's going to look. That's going to yeah. be some real acting right there. For sure. <laughs> For sure. Really. Smooth like that. I don't know. Yeah. Now, you you also play in Energy. Right. Uh, talk about that movie. And like, I, I, that's something I got to get back around to watching and shit like that. But talk about that movie, your character, and how was that that, uh, that role? Man, um, the Energy the energy movie, it was a, a real cool experience. That was my uh, first movie mm-hmm. that I ever filmed. And, um, um, Shit, it was real cool. I mean, mm. every, when I got to Detroit and got to meet everybody, that I think that was my first time in Detroit too. So it was mm-hmm. just like I got to meet everybody. Everybody was cool, mm-hmm. you know. And um, when we shot that movie, it was just like we all got along. There wasn't no drama or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. And then like with my character, it was more so like they told me like, oh yeah, you could just be yourself, like just be be your normal funny self, and mm-hmm. and they allowed me to play that and uh, implement that with my character. So that was real cool. For sure, for sure. Now, how did you get hip to, like, the whole Detroit uh, movie scene? Like, did somebody kind of, like, tell you, come down here and audition? Like, how you get hip to us? I mean, shit, I went to uh, Western well, Michigan. Yeah, 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 so, so like, it's it's people from um, Detroit that, you know, uh, attended that school. So mm-hmm. we all locked in that work, so. Yeah, for sure. That's how it happened. Mm-hmm. How movie scene in Chicago? Like, how y'all, how y'all looking out in Chicago as far as, like, y'all local independent movie scene in Chicago and shit? <laughs> Hold on, give me my <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Cause shit. And I, I'll say this: it's a reason why I'm out here in Detroit. <laughs> okay, okay. I feel. <laughs> I feel. I take a little drink of water real quick. Right? <laughs> they wild out. Hell yeah. Now, would you? Do you plan on moving in the future to try to, you know, say, bury your acting career or whatever, like Atlanta, Cali, like, or do you want to just do it from here? Um. Yeah, I definitely want to like, like, like you said, like uh, Atlanta or mm-hmm. Houston. Um, I definitely want to like start pursuing like uh, some acting opportunities out there for sure mm-hmm. in the long run. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Now we need we need uh we need D Will and the uh, and the what's name McGraw Abs and shit, dog. You been like <laughs> man, I, hey, I watched that shit too. Hey, man, look, I, that that's hard. Yeah, I think that was like my first uh Tubi shit that I like sat down and watched. Yeah, because that was during the pandemic with it. Mm-hmm. Niggas were really getting hit to it. Yeah, hey, yeah. So you fuck with the whole Moolah films and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. I was um, what what, what they had some movie that uh some before movies that came out like mm-hmm. Plug Love. Yeah, Plug Love. Yeah, yeah. That's, That's another one. That's another. Five one. O was hard. Uh huh. Yeah, uh, buffed up, buffed up. Yeah. That's what it was called. That was my first two man. What? That was the first one. <laughs> that was crazy. Duh. Classic. 
Now it's almost like a Friday. It, no, it is. It's be Friday. <laughs> it is. No, it is. It is. Uh, shout, shout out to my nigga Thomas Harris. Thomas, you gotta get my man D Will on. Man, dog. put me on that man. You, you, <laughs> Thomas the homie, dog. You gotta put. <laughs> hey, get my dog Rico. <laughs> <laughs> Make a cameo. <laughs> That'd be crazy. No, I, I would love to get on that. For no, sure. but buffed up for show is like a hood to be like Friday movie, dog. Right. Like, and it took me forever to watch that shit, bro. Yeah, but that shit was that. That shit was classic. For sure. Now, you know, Detroit is known for the Cardis, for the bus and shit. Mm-hmm. Y'all rock them bitches in Chicago? Nah, no. Nah. Okay. So, did you know like what the big fuss was about? It? Like how you know, what I'm saying we go crazy about the Cardis, bro. Like you put them bitches on your face, it's, you get you, it changed your whole image. It, it do, and I ain't gonna lie. When I seen the movie, it do. <laughs> <laughs> it really do. It, you, yeah, for sure. Um, man, nah, uh. I had learned about it in college though when I was yeah, going to Western. For like, sure. That's when it was uh like putting me hip to like the music scene too, like mm-hmm. like Rio and all them. Yeah. Grind high E. So I was listening to all that. Yeah. Who who was the first Detroit rapper you really started rocking with as far as like on the on the you know, not the mainstream, not the Shines and M and L's, but like the ones on the grind and shit. Um, well at the time he, he was kinda on the ground, um, T Grizzly. Yeah. He had that first day out when I was in uh college. For sure. Yeah, so that yeah. that was hard. T man, we need you, man. Need you on the show, baby. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, dog, I it, it it wouldn't be right if I didn't ask you about the whole Cat Williams shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shit just happened, nigga. Damn, that nigga shit did like twenty seven million views so far and counting because I know that shit probably had twenty nine yeah. by now. But bro, do you feel like first off, do you feel like he was wrong for doing the shit? I mean, he was he was exposing a lot, you know what I'm saying? But I guess he was just addressing some shit that needed to be addressed. That you know what I'm saying, niggas mm-hmm. that said about him. So. You feel like Cat Williams is wrong, and where do you rank Cat Williams as far as like one of your f- favorite comedians? Um, no, I don't feel like nah, hell nah, he went wrong because yeah. at the end of the day, you, you got to speak your truth, and mm-hmm. if you can accept it, accept it. If you can't, you can't, you know. But I don't, I don't feel like you got to always respect somebody from speaking from the truth, mm-hmm. you know. So, but um, where he ranked, he he took number two. Number two? Yeah, oh, I, got, I got Dave Chappelle, number one. Okay, yeah, you know something, you know something. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, he was talking about the whole dresses and shit, like niggas wearing dresses and right. shit like that. What's a what's a what's uh, something that you refuse to do as far as like, they, they will, we need you in this movie? They're like, fuck, no, I can't do that. What's some shit that you will refuse to do as an actor? Yeah, I, I, ain't, I ain't wearing no dress. I ain't doing no... um. No gay man scenes. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah so. <laughs> you, know, you gotta respect that. Cause like yeah. my man from Western ain't got whole family, but that nigga be playing the hell out of them gay roles, bro. On power, on power book too. Yeah, I'm cool. <laughs> it, you, you could you could offer whatever the, the numbers is. I, I'm cool, you know, yeah. but shit, you know, shout out to them. You yeah. know? I, Not- I, I ain't trying to get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah. hell they don't they don't come at you, man. <laughs> Oh shit! No, shout out to everybody. We love you. We love you. We yeah, love they, all. They some, yeah. <laughs> we love all. Man, say hell no. Anybody <laughs> <laughs> fuck me up, nigga? No, shout out to all, dog. But no, you you know that's okay to say what you wouldn't do and shit like that, dog. Right. That's my brother. That shit, dog. My brother, he after he acting up. He he stay out in Texas, dog. Dallas, they be doing a lot. He do a lot of shit, bro. Like a whole lot of shit. I asked him. He said that's something he wouldn't do either. Like. I was making fun of him because like nigga, that'd be funny as hell seeing your ass in this bitch in love with a man, dog. I, yeah. I clown him forever, dog. <laughs> yeah, it's because once they hit the internet or like once it's man, it's over with. You got yeah. kids, you got people that you care about, and they see. Oh, yeah, nah, nah. for sure, for sure. They got plenty to your son, like at Kyrie, man. That's how it was, bro. I was just <laughs> I needed that money, huh? <laughs> hey, now, who do you feel like if any if which one of those people he he mentioned that you feel they see Cat Williams is on site? What you mean? Do you feel like anybody? Because he talked about Steve Harvey said right. he talked about Ricky Smiley, Kevin Hart. He talked about Chris, <laughs> Chris Tucker, and they talk about a lot of people. Do you feel like any of those people, if they see him in in, in person, and they gonna be his ass? They gonna do a whole little Will Smith, uh, smack that nigga shit? I don't think so. Yeah, all, all you know, like a lot of them is almost sixty. You yeah. feel me? So it's it's kind of like man, that what, what y'all really. <laughs> Ain't nothing to really prove, you know. Just take what them words is or respond back, like how they was doing. Yeah. A lot of them were just responding back, so it's just yeah. like that shit crazy. That nigga Cat Williams was going crazy on that. Yeah, he was. Though. Yeah, he was fooling though. I ain't gonna lie, that nigga. It was like a stand up comedy show though. <laughs> I was I'm entertained. About, that nigga say we got Cat Williams in the building. Fuck all y'all. That nigga just went in going crazy. Dog. <laughs> that that shade drink or whatever they was drinking. <laughs> now, now, um, as a youngin, I thought that was Steve Harvey real Afro. I did too. Back when I had hair, I was like, dog, I got I made my shit perfect like this nigga. Like, dog, like, 
So that one is real hair? Nope. That's what I said. I said it was a piece. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. I was wondering why he cut it off and <laughs> Hell yeah. I said well, that was a piece, bro. Like, like, do you do you feel like it's okay? Like if you playing a character, like, all right, I'm gonna wear his man piece, nigga. Like, would you ever if we went boy, you know how niggas getting a little fake little right. waves and shit, nigga? Right. Like <laughs> Well, it'd be that serious to get a piece on your head, dog. Just go bald. <laughs> Cause yeah. like, I hate when niggas get the spray on hairline. Like, bro, just let yeah. it go. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. All yeah. Right. If it's that time for me, hopefully it don't ever get to that time. But I, you got yeah, people in your family that's bald. Yeah, my my daddy and stuff bald, so I know it's gonna probably happen. <laughs> but I, I ain't there yet. I still got my line. Yeah, man, I miss that shit though. I ain't never like <laughs> going to a barber shop and getting a good haircut. Dude. <laughs> Cause then you know it's your shit fucking up and you ain't feeling good after that haircut. Mm-hmm. You put your hat back on and like, hey, dog, this shit terrible, bro. Give me some short term or long term goals you got for yourself, dog. Short term. Um, I ain't gonna lie. I, I'm really just trying to get to the money. Mm-hmm. I, I just need the money. Yeah, a lot of money. Mm-hmm. What about so, what about on your long term shit? More money. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna. I, I, I need it. I need to see. I need to see a lot of good numbers. Anything new? Of, anything new that you want to start outside of uh, the whole acting shit? Anything that you got on your mind that you want to pursue? Oh, uh, um, oh, what you said with the acting. Um, anything new you want to do outside of acting? With acting, like just something new, new that you want to do? Oh uh, yeah, for sure. I want to start traveling more. Mm-hmm. Like going to see the world. Like for sure. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dog. Now, is there anything that you regret? Or anything that you wish you could change as far as your start with acting? Nah, because because it was definitely an experience that I wouldn't recommend a lot of people go through, but mm. it was an experience that I needed because it, it humbled me and it also um taught me a lot, like with just disciplining myself and not getting too close or comfortable and knowing the difference between professional and, you know, personal. Yeah. So. Hell yeah, hell yeah. What's your advice to someone who wanted to get into this whole acting business? Um, I, man, it's <laughs> you gotta really, you gotta really know who you working with, know mm-hmm. who you working with, understand that um, it is a business, so don't don't take none personal, mm-hmm. and then um, know know your worth too, like just know understand who you are. Mm-hmm. How you coming and, and and not accept just anything just because you feel me like yeah. you can be on a movie or you can be on a, a little show or something like that. For sure, yeah. for sure. Have you have you ever heard or do you think that you can have a successful movie of people in the movie are playing roles but they in real life don't really like each other? What you mean? Like me and you, we playing we don't like each other. You know what I'm saying? But we playing in this movie together. Can that be? Can you have a successful movie with two niggas who don't like each other? Like, man, <laughs> you've seen that shit already, huh? <laughs> I I ain't gonna hold. I I nah. Like if you're in rock with somebody, could you do a movie with them, even though you know it's gonna be a great movie? Like it, it depends on the situation, like how deep our beef is. Cause mm. if it's if it's deep, I nah, yeah. I ain't working. Nah, hell nah. <laughs> 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 oh bro, I'm, hell yeah, hell but, yeah. But if it's some, you feel me? Some like, petty, some little bullshit. Like a conversation, we can we can hash it over a conversation for sure. Like mm. you stay out the way, I stay out mm. my way. Yeah, you know, but. What what's a beef that you feel like you would never see resolved, and what's a beef you would like to see resolved? I say that to say you had the whole Jeezy and Gucci man shit. Right, niggas thought that that shit would never, they they would never be in the same room with each other. Right, what's a beef that you would want to see in, and a beef that you feel like would never end? <laughs> I want to see the game in Fifty Cent. I want to see that beef end, dog. Right, <laughs> I say. Oof. That's tough. Cause it's a lot of it's a lot of beefs. It's a lot of beefs. <laughs> Which one you wish? Like, damn, man, why y'all niggas got beef? I mean, you you could say like like Dirk and Young Boy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lucci and Young Thug. Yeah, that shit ain't gonna never end. I don't think. Yeah, <laughs> that one ain't gonna never end. Them niggas in prison beefing. That's what I'm saying. Then, like, I, I wish that Vaughn and, and uh, Duck could have ended their beef, when, mm, but they had passed away. But yeah, if they would have made some music together, man, that show would have been big mm. for Chicago. That ain't King Von, King Von, when you listen to his shit, nigga, that nigga, his music is, is a movie. Right. Like, he sounds like a movie, nigga. It's you real hit, life. Yeah, yeah, for real. It's a movie. You can see the shit, everything. And a beef that would never, ever end, nigga, is fucking Rick Ross and, and 50. Well, 50 yeah, ain't really ended nothing, nigga. He ain't no beef with nobody, nigga, but... Yeah, Fat Joe, yeah. But I, I want to see him in the game make some music together, dog. Yeah, that would be dope, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
making a band, bro. Do you remember uh, P Diddy making a band? Uh, I I heard about it. Damn, how old are you, bro? <laughs> <laughs> that just told my age. So <laughs> you like what? Twenty three. Mm-hmm. Damn, I mean this bitch thirty seven. This motherfucker. <sighs> I'm an old nigga, dog. Fuck, man. I missed the I missed the twenties, bro. But making a band, you know, he came up with that shit. He had five people, six people, whatever in the band. So I'm gonna ask you if you making your band, but ain't got nothing to do with music. Is a movie you and four other actors or actresses that's gonna make this movie? Y'all gonna be the stars of the movie. Who are you and your four other uh, actors or actresses? It could, it could be like anybody. Anybody. It could be mainstream. It could be um, uh, underground or whatever. All right. Well, I'm gonna um, have my uh, homie Kenny. I'm gonna uh, cast him. All right. You and Kenny. Uh, Tay. All right. Uh, Trail. You said one more. Yep. Probably, probably be like a female, huh? Mm-hmm. But damn, I should have put some females in there. I feel like I'm naming all niggas in this. <laughs> it's a bad chick though. Some, <laughs> some, some girls are Tubi movie, boy. I ain't gonna lie with. No, nah, I need, I need like. A... In your movie, dog, well, girl, <laughs> best shots. I'm like, goddamn. I said, ah. I, went, I went to go follow her. I'm married. I went to go follow her. Like, goddamn. <laughs> I see why Rico's going crazy about her. Man, it's, it's a few Tubi crushes though. It be oh, probably. What's her name? Um, start with a K. What's her name? I forget her name, but yeah, she be in the motherfuckers too. She be in a lot of. No, she not. Crystal Dow decent too. <laughs> what? <laughs> she straight. Man, <laughs> me and my role, she packing down there. <laughs> Hold on, it's a, it's a few. <laughs> Crystal Dow, she straight boy. I ain't yeah. gonna lie to you, boy. God damn, what's that? Yo, that movie she was in that was a funny movie. Y'all both was crazy, and you and that nigga. My, my man is light-skinned nigga with the braids and shit. Oh, I forget that nigga name. That nigga fool in that movie, nigga. Oh, you talking about If I Can't? Yeah. <laughs> what, I forgot his name now. That nigga fool it. All right, now give me your making a band on some industry shit, like the, the big wigs. Who would you and four other people be? I know you were making good. Oh, like, okay, so boom. I, yeah, them, them, I ain't gonna lie. Them all females. <laughs> Probably her. Uh, Taraji P. Henson. All right. Um... Who else? Nah, I got to be uh, some of the guys. I'll probably say Will Smith. Okay. And then um, Jamie Foxx. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. And I had somebody come on this podcast, bro. My dog, shout out to my dog, Spank the Bank. He said that he felt like Jamie Foxx was a better actor than Denzel. <laughs> he said he felt like Jamie Foxx rose. Each role was different. He felt like right. Denzel Washington, even though it's different roles, you still gonna have that Denzel Washington effect in each character. Yeah. What would yeah. you say about that? You say you crazy or you understand? No, nah, it's, it's definitely an unpopular opinion, but I mm. I, I, per, I personally believe Jamie Foxx is like the number one. Yeah. Just yeah. because his his range, like he can Django, oh yeah. my gosh, the Ray movie. Yeah, for sure. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. He embodies those roles. So it's like, and then he could be funny at the same time and he could sing. So it's like, yeah, 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 that nigga versatile. Hell yeah, shout out to Jamie Foxx, dog. Come on, show, cuz. <laughs> man, <laughs> that'd be dope as hell. That'd be real dope. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. How you want to be remembered, dog? Like as an actor, as a person, how you want to be remembered when it's all said and done? I mean, hopefully it's no time soon. I will. Right. But how you want to be remembered and shit when it's all said and done, dog? I I was one of them niggas that you know did did the best I could. Like I strive to be the best version of myself. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And um. That's all I could do. You feel I ain't trying to compete with nobody. I ain't trying to, you know, you feel me? I'm just trying to be the best version of myself. And if I could, you know, do that or, you know, have that that feeling like, oh, yeah, I didn't did that. Shit, I'm decent. I ain't going to lie. For sure, for sure. So there's no competition because, you know, like everything niggas do, music, hooping, right. football, is always competition. Like, you just feel like you just going at your own pace, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm just chilling. Yeah, hell yeah. For sure, for sure. Now, I got to think at the end, dog. You know what I'm saying? I got these two little segments that be on some funny shit. But one of them called too early, too late, or right on time. I give you something, you tell me if you did it too early, too late, or right on time. Mm-hmm. First time not first time I get some ass. Sex, though. Was it too early, too late, or right on time? Too early. Too early. <laughs> oh, this niggas getting in, boy. <laughs> All right, figuring out life. Did you too 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 early, too late, or right on time? Uh too late. All right, moving out your parents' house. Too early, too late, or right on time. Too 
too late. Too late. Yeah. First relationship was that too early, too late, or right on time? Too early. All right. First job. Uh, right on time. All right. All right. Acting. Your first movie was it too early, too late, or right on time? Too late. All right. Find out Santa Claus wasn't real. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, that was too late too. Like this might fuck up in school for you, though. Man, I was probably like twelve. I don't, I don't even... <laughs> yeah, it was late. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I think I stayed up that whole night, so I, I ain't hear nothing, nothing come through the chimney. <laughs> you know I mean? Like damn, this shit ain't right, though. Mm-hmm. Leaving a messed up relationship too early, too late, right on time. Uh, too late. Okay, okay. Now I gotta think on what's worse. I'll give you two scenarios. You tell me which one worse. What's worse? Missing the um, missing the open tackle or messing up on the line in a in a, in a movie role. <sighs> missing the open tackle. Yeah, man. yeah, man. <laughs> fuck that nigga. That nigga Burns could have sacked that nigga uh Prescott nigga, and that would get that safety. I don't know man. what the fuck he did. Yeah. Them be them game changers right there. You could always redo a scene or something, but man, you can't get that that tackle back. <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah. What's worse, your kids catch you having sex or you catch your parents having sex? Dang, I'll probably say my kids catching me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, dog. What's, what's worse? Having to wear the same drawers for two weeks or having to wear the same socks for two weeks? Same drawers. <laughs> we get busy fucked up. <laughs> 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 what's worse? The relationship ending and that girl saying she's going to kill herself or she's saying she's going to kill you? What's worse? Yeah. Her saying she gonna kill me, shit. <laughs> she gonna kill so You mad at that man, shit. What's worse, wearing fake jewelry or fake designer clothes? Dang, I think fake jewelry right now. Yeah. yeah. Now you about to you about to smash a chick. What's worse, titties with no nipples or nipples and no titties? Titties with no nipples. <laughs> nipples with no. Wait, you said nipples with no titties? <laughs> titties with no nipples or nipples and no titties? Nipples and no. Titties. So she's got nipples, nigga. Ain't nothing coming. Nigga. Just nipples, nigga. Damn. <laughs> probably, probably that second one. The no, no yeah. nipples. <laughs> no nipples. Yeah. What's worse, being a tall nigga with short arms, or a short nigga with tall legs? <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably say a short nigga. Yeah. What's worse, no car, nice crib, or nice car, no crib? I'll probably say. Worse is not having a car. For real? Yeah. You said you can sleep in that bitch, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Duh. What's worse? Not having money for your kids on Christmas or not having money for your kid on their birthday? Not having them for their birthday. Birthday? Yeah, okay. Everybody say that shit. I don't know anything yeah. different about that shit. What's worse? Losing your girl to your homeboy or losing your girl to your ex? Losing it to my homeboy, I'll be blue. <laughs> yeah, you heard, heard that nigga, dog. Yeah. <laughs> What's worse, find out your parents ain't your real parents, or find out your siblings is adopted? Yeah, my parents ain't my real parents. All right. What's worse, find out your your girl cheated through text or in action? Uh, in action. Hell yeah, I'm mm. going crazy. What would you if, if you if you really ran to that shit though? What first thing you you think you're gonna do? <laughs> Man, I'll, I'll probably get locked up. <laughs> <laughs> like, nigga, so in your bed, in your bed, it's just going ham. Yeah, it's over. Duh, what's worse, failing at something or not starting? Um, not starting. All right, all right. The last one. What's worse, somebody talking through a movie or somebody telling you an ending? Talking through the movie. Oh, hell yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah, I hate when niggas do that shit, dog. Especially if you watch Friday. Even though we even watch Friday a hundred times. Mm-hmm. Niggas want to say every motherfucking line that bitch, dog. <laughs> hey, man. I appreciate you coming to this motherfucker, bro. Appreciate it was dope, time. dog. But I gotta ask you this because I installed this shit from all the smoke. If you could see somebody on this podcast, but you gotta help me get that person, who would you want to see on the podcast? Who would I want to see on the podcast? That you can help me. You gotta help me get him or her. And it could be what, like an actor or actor, rapper, whatever. Just somebody you that you know that you feel like should be on the podcast that you can help me get. Oh uh, yeah. Um, uh, I'll probably say. Malik. Okay. Yeah, Malik uh Frazier. All right, what he do? He an actor. He um was he played AJ in um Sloppy Seconds. Okay, okay, hell yeah, yeah hell yeah. Malik, let's get it, dog. <laughs> Come mm-hmm. on to the show, bro. <laughs> yeah, he's been in a few movies, make it out and mm-hmm. 
um by any means and i think he was on street legal as well so yeah okay that's i gotta get hip to street legal i gotta watch that shit. he said it was yeah. good as fuck dog that's good when uh when when can we see you on big screen again dog man uh real soon real soon um it's been you know a few directors hit me up and stuff and mm. we're gonna see what's going on with uh me you know going on the cast and everything like that but mm. yeah in the near future i'll be back oh yeah thomas and my dog Moolah Films, all get, get, get trying to tell you, man. Hey, I still want to be uh third number three, dog. <laughs> Let me get shot in that motherfucker. That's what I'm saying. I don't need no big role, dog. You want to leave anybody with some uh some positive words, dog? Um, yeah, for sure. Like everybody, just you know, keep doing what y'all doing. Keep going. I know at, at times it's gonna seem difficult, like nobody fucking with you or nobody feeling like giving you a chance or something like that but just mm -hmm. you know keep going keep striving mm -hmm. you know um just stay being you things gonna work out how it's supposed to work out so for sure for sure and in the future we got the uh for the love of d will coming up soon directed by q <laughs> <laughs> he's looking for somebody who's gonna fuck with his family <laughs> and he ain't on no rico shit though he a real nigga dog <laughs> but no i appreciate you coming to this motherfucker dog for sure man you know what i'm saying shout out to uh, d will chicago and shit man but uh, you already know what it is, man. Shout out to everybody. Episode 184. D-Wheel in the building. Ain't no competition for this. I don't see it, man. We out.